Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ahmed Lemon and welcome back to Simple Planes. Today we're going to have a look at a few Nazi wonder planes. These were aircraft designed either through the mid or near the end of the war when Germany was losing. They were losing for about 1942, you know, the Battle of Stalingrad and the end of the war in North Africa in 1943 onwards. So these were a series of increasingly, increasingly ridiculous and desperate designs which they uh, they hopefully thought would turn the war in their favour. Today we're going to be having a look at the ME262, the Focke-Wulf Tribeflugel, the BV141B, the HO229, the BA349 Natter. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. So first up we have the obvious choice which is this, the ME262. This uh, in-game flight model was made by user Miko Janster. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Doesn't matter really. Um, anyway, yeah, Mickey Anster made this model. It's a great looking model, very uh, very detailed. I don't know whether it's historically accurate, but uh, oh well. Anyway, um, anyway, the two six two. Obviously, it's got the four. Well, obviously, they're not thirty millimeter cannons because you don't have guns that big in uh, simple planes at the moment. Four. It had four thirty millimeter cannons in the front. These are just your your normal uh, in-game aircraft guns. There and it. The 262 also carried two two dumb bombs, either 250 or 500 kilograms, slung underneath the fuselage. So we're going to take it out for a quick spin now. So as you all probably know, the 262 was the only well, it's the only plane on in this vi in this video that actually served in the war. The only uh, jet engine equipped. No, it wasn't the only jet engine equipped. German aircraft, the Arado AR-234, also also served. I, I don't know in any particular numbers. I thought it was just they. Well, it doesn't matter. They don't have very many of them. Um, anyway, yeah, this one served with the Luftwaffe from I think 19 for, around mid 1944 until the end of the war. Once again, I am probably wrong. Maybe later in 1944, but its design started before the war, long before 1939. But it stalled through for various reasons. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, it started in before the Second World War, which is the same as the British development of jet engine aircraft. And I think what may have uh, stopped this aircraft being more effective in the war as well was. Um, was uh, Adolf Hitler's um, part in basically deciding what happens with every branch of the German armed forces because obviously well he probably took a look at this plane and thought yes that'd be a great uh, that'd be a great bomber aircraft and ground attack aircraft which everyone in the room probably with him at the time probably thought no no it probably wouldn't be a good one at this point because that was in, it was in 1943 he said this 1943 obviously the German army was well it was after Stalingrad so it was not going well for the German army really I think by then they would pretty much lost in North Africa as well but there you go um ME262 well it's a beautiful plane obviously I, I, I say this about most things I fly I don't really find very many uh, planes or tanks particularly Bad looking. I think they all look great. They're, well, especially this. Look at the. Oh, well. Um, I was going to carry on talking about the plane, but then I just got shot down by AA. Um, I'll uh, I'll restart. <laughs> I'll restart and carry on. Game was War Thunder levels of effective, but there you go. Anyway, yeah. So it's it's powered by two uh, Junkers Jumo or Yumo. 004 B1 turbojet engines, giving it a max speed of around 900 kilometers an hour. Of course, this is real life technical specifications we're looking at. I don't know what, I don't know whether they're realistically uh, reflected in this game. They're probably not because of the jet engines in the game give a certain power, a certain power rating. So it's hard to accurately control the max speed of an aircraft. Anyway, yeah, this, as I said, this is a great, this is a great model made by Mika Janster, which I've downloaded and like having a lot of fun with, just flying it around. The my favorite 
I don't know, this map, on this on the map is definitely Maywall, this big desert map here. I don't like the other ones. The islands are very small and just surrounded by a lot of water. So basically take off, then you're flying over water and that's it. You know, it's not that interesting, flying over water. Um yeah, so this is the ME262 in simple planes. I'm very happy with it. Very happy with its performance. Uh, still, still getting, still learning the uh, the ropes of this game. Still no good really at pretty much anything apart from flying around aimlessly, um, because I'm mostly used to. In terms of flying games, I just play War Thunder. Well, I did play, you know, that uh, that other plane game that we don't talk about called uh, World of Warplanes, but no one plays that really. That 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 was a that was a poor. That game was bad. I mean, considering Wargaming's reputation, that was very bad. They could have done a lot better with that. But anyway, yeah, with War Thunder, flying flying in War Thunder, it's easy. You just point your mouse in a direction, and your plane automatically flies towards it. Obviously, I'm never gonna. Pl I wouldn't play Simulator. Simulator with aircraft is a very bad idea. I've never actually once got off the runway with any aircraft in a simulator um, test flight. I wouldn't obviously ever try to go in a game because I'd just be a waste a waste of a teammate for everyone else that probably knows what they're doing. Anyway, so yeah, I'm not too great at um, like aiming in planes at anything in particular in simple planes yet. Um, Got to work on, you know, trying to line up on targets. Might have, like, you know, aiming at ground targets, bombing ground targets. I mean, you saw I, I did hit one truck earlier because you saw it roll over just before the AA took me out. But I'm going to try. There's another AA tank there. I'm going to try and go in for these guys. So, wish me luck. That's right, it's ME262 ME and it's ground attack roll. Oh, did I did I get one? I think I got one. I think I did destroy one there, and I found a new location as well. Did I get one? Nope. Oh boy! Run, 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 run away! Get below the AA. There we go. Anyway, we're gonna flick over to the next plane now. So uh, yeah, this is the ME two six two. Right. So the next thing we've got, I'm sure you're confused looking at this. Uh, it is actually a plane. Technically, although it looks like some sort of strange plane, helicopter, fish, space rocket hybrid, is the Fokker Wolf Tree Flugel. I'm definitely not saying that right, and I do not care. In the Tree Flugel, yes, this was uh, designed in 1944, uh, and it's well, it's ridiculous. Um, obviously, it never actually flew. No uh, complete prototypes were designed before the end of the war it only made it to uh, a was it a wind tunnel yeah the wind tunnel model was found in an abandoned german factory and apparently uh, the germans thought this would be actually be a viable um a viable vehicle basically the point of it was uh, most of germany's airfields in 1944 were being turned into um well piles of rubble by the combined air forces of the us the uk and the Soviet Union. So what the Germans needed were vertical takeoff vehicles that required no, um, didn't require airfields. So this thing would take off vertically, and they basically position them over factories or whatever. And then you've got a point defence aircraft that will zip up into the sky and shoot down those pesky bombers. And this will be it, the Fokker Wolf Tribe Flugel. Um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a weird design, I give it that, but in-game this model is made by the user Skewer, is, it works, it works, should, I'd, I'd say it's defying several laws of gravity, but then again it looks like it would have been real life. Now, on the end of the wings here are ram, well, real life they are ram jets, which obviously need air flowing through them to begin with, so in real life this would have used rockets to take off. To get itself up in the air, and once it was moving up in the air, air going into the jets meant they could uh, fire up because obviously the rockets wouldn't last very long. So once you've got air in the in the jets, 
you'd be laughing. So this is how it works in game. As I said, better than it uh, better than it deserves to. Especially with that strange yeah, it's got a strange cross tail design. And obviously those this is the only it doesn't have wings as such, but it works. It works really, really well. And I am I am absolutely blown away by how well this has been designed by Skewer. He's done a fantastic job on this. Obviously it uh, it spins, it rolls pretty quickly. Um, in terms of pitch, pretty good. But obviously that all it does is uh, pitch and roll. It obviously has no um, no dedicated vertical stabilizer. Obviously it's, it's well, no vertical stabilizing um, in the you know the, the traditional sense. So. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing to fly in the game. It looks absolutely hilarious. Looks like it shouldn't be flying at all, but here we go. It is. Uh, it's got guns, two two guns on the front. I don't know what its armament was supposed to be in real life. The real life um, aircraft, I'm assuming, probably the 30mm Mark 103s that like the ME262 had, because it was meant to be a you know a dedicated bomber interceptor you know bombers are flying over a factory this would be launched from the roof of the factory or nearby you know obviously it doesn't need an airfield it just pops straight off shoots straight up into the sky to intercept the bomber so it would have been had a heavy armament probably 30 millimeter cannons obviously in in game it just has uh these little aircraft guns um obviously because of the frame rate it's the well i'm just gonna call them win wings rotary wings rotors whatever you want to call them um, start to look a bit funny. Um, weirdly, I before I downloaded this, I, I thought, okay, how is it supposed to land? So I looked up online, obviously not for how this model should land, how it was supposed to land in real life. Obviously, it didn't get far from the um, the planning stage. All they had was a wind tunnel mock up, and apparently, it was basically supposed to land. Um, by lowering the power to the rockets, no, the the jet engines, um, pitching the vehicle upwards and then reducing the power so it basically lands flat back on its tail, which sounds absolutely ridiculous. There's no way that it w that would have worked. There's no way that would have worked at all. I mean, for a start, the pilot's facing forwards. He had a fixed seat facing forwards. How is he supposed to land something when he can't look behind him? That that just wouldn't have worked. But then again, this was just a fantasy plane. Like most of the planes on my list. It was a fantasy plane. It was never going to work. But we're gonna have a go in this in the game. We're gonna have a go see if see if this landing method works. Because I had to go with it earlier and just tried reducing power and flying low on the ground, low level. And it just well, it didn't go well. It just blew up. So anyway, reducing power to the jet engines and I'm not going to pitch upwards just yet actually let's pit if we can get it pitched up well, I can't really pitch upwards very well uh, can't really get it if we get it vertical and then cut power and hopefully stop it pitching downwards which is not going to happen yeah, it's not having it. Um, we'll try it lower to the ground. There's, there's no way this thing's going to be able to land properly. I, I might hit the ground actually, trying to right. Uh, cut power. Come on, pitch upwards. Come on. Come on. Okay, it's not going to pitch upwards, so what we're going to try and do is just land as gently as we can. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, well, I blew up into fewer pieces. Okay, nope, I blew up into as many pieces as I did earlier. Yeah, this is an incredibly stupid design. It never would have worked in real life. It barely works in a, a simulator 
80 years later. But there you go, the Fog Wolf Tree Flugel. Oh, one more thing I want to add about the, uh, the Fog Wolf Tribe Flugel while we're on it is that uh, it appeared in the first Captain America movie as the escape vehicle that the Red Skull uses to. I think it's one of, like one one of the factories that Captain and the was it the Howling Commandos take out, and then he almost captures the Red Skull. But basically, he jumps into one of these and escapes. So, hail Hydra! <laughs> Okay, next up, we've got the Bloman Voss BV-141B, which was a tactical reconnaissance aircraft designed by Bloman Voss, and it was held, it was designed from 1938 onwards in response to a competition run by the Reich's Air Ministry to make a, well, obviously a tactical reconnaissance plane. And it did ult ultimately lose out in a competition to the Fog Wolf 189 Uhu or Eagle Owl, which, as you can see, does share some similarities to this aircraft, mostly being like this very, this very open um, gondola or cockpit for the crew, because it was a reconnaissance plane, you know, so having good visibility in most directions was ideal. Now, this model in simple planes is made by user Bogdan X, who I, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of his work. He's made he's made a lot of great uh, aircraft. Um, reproductions in simple planes now this one as you can see is in a romanian air force uh livery which uh it's great i like, I like the color choice i like I, said, I like the roundels and things like that obviously this this barely served in the uh barely served the german air force never mind the romanian one so anyway let's take it for a test flight So obviously the first thing you'll realise when you look at this plane is it's a symmetrical design. Um, I couldn't find anywhere really particularly describing why it had it was asymmetrical in its shape. Um, I'm guessing that not having the, the you know the cockpit directly behind the engine meant it had better visibility. Now you do have better visibility all round from the cockpit, as in you don't have parts of the engine and other part, essential parts of the fuselage obstructing your view. So in a sense, yes, this would have been this is a good uh, aircraft in terms of reconnaissance all round 300, you know, 360 degree visibility. Uh, oh, can I just say this is the B1? This is the this is the Bloman Voss BV141B model because. The previous model did have a symmetric tailplane, whereas this one has an asymmetric one, so it only has the um, I forgot what that part of the plane is called. It only has one on that side, not on this side. It's, it's cut off. I think that was too. Uh, I don't know why they did that. But anyway, yes, because of that difference, this is specifically the BV one four one B model. Uh, in real life, it did have a lot of problems, obviously, when it came to. Um, you know, stabilizing a plane so as unbalanced as this, um, because obviously you know, usually it's a uh, plane is symmetrical down the central axis. That wasn't a joke, though you can take it as such. Obviously, this one's complete. This would otherwise be completely unbalanced. So a lot of steps were taken to make sure this is a level plane. Obviously, it wouldn't otherwise if it wasn't stable, it wouldn't fly. And it would have been a failure, but they did fly in real life. Um, the actual number of aircraft that were made is unclear. Wikipedia gives me between 13 and 28, which is great. I don't know why they they think it's between. I don't know how they ended up saying it's between 13 and 28, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, it's just a prototype. Um, I added it to this video of you know wonder planes because of its incredibly unique design. I do really like the design of this plane. I do also have uh, a version of this plane in War Thunder through a mod made by you know, a, um, a user made flight mod. Obviously not used in battles but still you can still fly around and take on some... I think in the custom mission you put, it puts you in you take on a large number of Gloucester Meteors 
which seems unfair considering this isn't the most maneuverable plane and the Gloucester Meteor is a very maneuverable plane and I don't know what that is. Oh, is that? Oh, that's, I think that's one of my custom planes just sort of flying around. And I'm glad it's not armed because it probably would come after me. Anyway, so yes, the BV141B brought to life in simple planes by Bogman X, which I'm very grateful for. Okay, next up, for all you uh, Wolfenstein fans out there, we've got this, the HO229, built by Horton, and in this case, recreated in simple planes by user Itamar3553. Now, this plane was designed by possibly the biggest fans of uh, flying wheel designed aircraft, uh, the Horton Brothers. In uh, 1943, they designed it in a response, in a request from Luftwaffe, like, uh, well, the head, the head guy of the Luftwaffe, Herman Goring. I really phrase that terribly. I'm so sorry. Basically, Herman Goring wanted something called the 3 times 1000 which is they wanted an aircraft that could carry a 1000 kilogram bomb load at a range of 1000 miles at a speed of 1000 kilometers. So, obviously, jet engines would do the trick. So, this has the same engines as the ME262, those Junkers, U Junkers, Junkers, whatever. Umo. 004 turbo jets uh it is was well, it was a very unique aircraft for its time i say not really for its time it barely got past the testing stage before the war ended but just look at that is that doesn't look like something that was uh designed in the early 1940s but there you go um in terms of its testing it didn't go too well they did fly a glider model of this aircraft, obviously unpowered, in 1944. Uh, several months later, they tested it with the jet engines. It did manage to fly. Then they tested it in a mock dogfight against an ME262, and it outmaneuvered an ME262. This bizarre-shaped aircraft uh, outmaneuvered the first. Well, it outmaneuvered. German Germany's only current um jet fighter aircraft, so well, it wouldn't have it would have been better as a fighter aircraft, surely, than a bomber aircraft, but um test flights continued after that, uh one of which resulted in a crash and a fire on the plane which killed the test pilot. Um and then basically the war ended. And the designers, the Holton brothers, ended up in um ended up in Argentina and made several designs for the Argentine Air, Corps, Air Force looked them up because they still try to stick with this flying wing design which I don't think works with a cargo aircraft I don't think you can make a cargo aircraft with a flying wing design but they attempted it anyway um, just look them up on the Wikipedia page the, the aircraft they come up with is possibly the stupidest thing I've ever seen and looks like something simple planes anyway we'll take it for a test flight in game now um, I like those jet effects. You know, a lot, a lot of things in this game are very basic, but it looks great. Now I don't know why the, um, I don't know why they seem to be those flaps seem to be reversing in a direction that you expect them to go. But there you go. It's a wonderful thing. It really is a fun thing to fly in simple planes. Very, very fast. And well, its maneuverability isn't that great. It doesn't seem that responsive. It's not as responsive as I'd expect. So I'm pressing down now, and elevators is pretty pretty slow to react. But still, uh, roll rolls good. Uh, yaw obviously there is none because it doesn't have a vertical stabilizer, so. No yaw there. I think all yaw does is it's alright. It's not uh, it's not water. No, not going to turn these off. Nope, yaw doesn't roll the um, it doesn't turn the the landing gear either. So okay, I can't quite maneuver this on the ground. Oh well. So yeah, this yeah this plane is well, it's the first jet engined flying wing aircraft, and people like to say. But you can credit this aircraft for the existence of things like, you know, the B-2 Spirit, 
uh, the F-117 Nighthawk Stealth Bomber. Speaking of the Stealth Bomber, I don't know, for the base, basically a lot of the 20th century, there's been ongoing debate on whether this was a stealth aircraft. And despite claims from one of the Horton brothers, as late as I think the 60s or 70s, this aircraft had no stealth capabilities at all. Um, as far as I remember, one of the Horton brothers claimed that when they designed and made it, they coated it in some sort of well, some sort of charcoal-like substance, which they claimed would give it a very small radar signature. But the remaining design or airframe that the Smithsonian Museum in America has did extensively look over their aircraft which was well they have the wreck of a completed prototype and they said they had it had no evidence of any charcoal like substance so I think the designer I forget which Horton brother it was basically may have just been trying to take credit for stealth aircraft retroactively and tried to claim that his aircraft that he made was the first stealth aircraft but it wasn't there was nothing stealthy about this thing it's all just false attribution and lies anyway a lot of fun to fly in game obviously in real life it was it did ha it was meant to have the uh, once again the same 30 millimeter cannons I think it was either two or four men have the same yeah the same 30 millimeter cannons the mark 108 the 262 had well most late war German aircraft like the later uh, Fokker Wolf 190s had the 30 millimeters it I think it would have been a very capable fighter had it just been you know turned up a bit earlier in the war um, probably would have made a difference. I'm not one of those people that think, oh, you know, if, if the Germans had just got this weapon or made that plane, they would have won the war. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. It's just, they was, the odds was just stacked against them. They were never going to win. And good on it, because they were terrible. The regime was a terrible thing, which a lot of people like to overlook when they um, talk about how great certain uh, Nazi designs were. Oh, the uh, landing gear does actually result, uh, respond to the. Um, your buttons, that's good. Anyway, yeah, the Horton HO229, I think this is a V3, specifically a V3 model, in simple planes, thanks to Itamar3553, who did a wonderful job with the model. Okay, the last plane I've got for you here is absolutely the most ridiculous one on the list. Yes, potentially even more ridiculous than the uh, Tree Plugel, which is this, the Bachem. Backem, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's German, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not. Anyway, Backem BA349, or known as the Natter, which was a rocket powered point defense bomber interceptor aircraft. So, similar to the Tree Flugel, you know, it did a. It, <coughs> sorry. It was a vertical takeoff uh, bomber interceptor. That required no runway, could be launched from a very small area. Uh, you know, shoots up into the sky, goes after those pesky uh, capitalist bombers, shoots them down with its payload. Oh, it actually had rockets. Weirdly, it was a rocket-powered fighter, and had it did actually have a little uh, a little multiple um, unguided rocket launcher in the nose. Um, so, to us, it's a stupid idea on paper and a stupid idea in reality. Which um, which was exactly how it went. Um, yep. Yeah, so it was designed right at the end of the war. They got they, the Germans were getting pretty well, very desperate. And the first test they had, which was in first, the first test they carried out was on the first of March, nineteen forty-five, and it didn't work. Basically, the plane exploded and killed its test pilot, who was at the twenty was a twenty-two year old by the name of by the name of Lothar Sieber. So yeah, a massive load of good what little design went into this and all it did was kill a 22 year old. So yeah, we're going to see how it goes in game. Um, it's fun, 
it's fun. It's a very fun thing to fly in game. Like what you basically have to do is using the VTOL controls, this bar down the side on the left, raises it up, and then you've got to apply the throttle to a certain degree. Uh, it doesn't really matter what angle you get it at. Uh, let's get full throttle now. So press one. There we go. We're away. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm upside down. I'm upside down. There we go. We made it. <laughs> we made it. Um. Yeah. So no no wonder its first um, test flight in real life didn't go so well. I'm not saying it would have gone anything like this. This is a this is a simulation game. But um. Yeah, this thing's stupid. Stupid in so many, so many ways. Look at its stupid little wings. The stupid tail plane. It, l it literally looks like someone draw something on a piece of paper and thought, look, a plane looks like that. And then I thought, that's great. Let's try it. This could be the last, our last uh, ditch effort to save Germany at the end of the Second World War. But there you go. Point defense, rocket powered fighter for protecting the fatherland from those pesky bombers. Um, does fire these rockets. But the thing, I'm currently going at 700 miles an hour, so I need to imagine how fast those rockets are currently going, because they're getting away from me quite fast. Anyway, this thing is pretty much impossible to control at high speed, so we're going to pull it down a little bit. Uh, okay, maybe not that much. Yeah, this, this thing has very little control. Um... But yeah, props to the guy that made it. Its design, uh, its method of takeoff is very unique. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I like it. Um, good for in game, not good for real life. But then again, no one was ever going to make anything like this ever again. The US made a few designs with the similar to this. What was it called? The, the I can't remember its actual designation, but it was known as a pogo or something. Basically, a small. Oh, I've run out of fuel. And we're going down. Does it have a? Par no, it doesn't. Have, uh, I don't know. I I should have looked up to see whether it had a parachute. Um, it didn't go too much worse than its actual first uh flight. Just flicking through my notes here. Yeah, basically in real life, its idea of returning to Earth was basically um once it's out of fuel, the pilot would glide it to obviously a stable speed, so not like 700 miles an hour. Um, then it would split in half. Apparently, the front and back end, you know, the pilot being in the front, which is, well, you don't really ever want the plane to do that, but apparently that's what it was designed to do. And then both halves would parachute safely, I'm saying with seriously large quotation marks, safely to the ground, where it would then be put together, back together and reused. So, yeah, apparently they thought they could use this plane more than once, which I highly doubt. Anyway, so yes, that was the BA349. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it kind of educational. Just to find out how many stupid uh, aircraft designs a dying regime can come up with in an attempt to save itself. But there you go. Um, Nazi wonder planes. Thanks for watching. I've been Armour Lemon. Goodbye.